Hello, I'm an aspiring mortician, and here I have simulated an embalming room for demonstrative purposes to show how, to, how an embalming is done. The first step of doing an embalming is to put on the protective clothing, because a mortician has to deal with hazardous materials in the body, such as bacteria and diseases, and they happen so to be deadly. So typically a mortician will put on some kind of gloves and a hazmat suit, sometimes even wear a full-on gas mask because they also deal with chemicals, very deadly chemicals. So here I'm putting on a protective suit. I can get my shoes free. Yeah. Now the embalming can start. So the first step to an embalming is to check the vitals. Even though our deceased is supposedly dead, the vitals still need to be checked as on an alive person because typically they are dead, but there have been cases where somebody is still alive. So we don't want to, like, do that on somebody who's alive. So that's done as it's done on an alive person and after that part, the face is then positioned. Usually they position the face with the eyes closed and in a most relaxed position that they can get. So here I am closing his eyes and making sure that he is as relaxed as he can possibly be. The next step to an embalming is to flex the body for rigor mortis. Rigor mortis is a condition where after a body dies, a few hours typically, the joints and the muscles will stiffen up. So usually the body is massaged and flexed a little bit to make sure that the rigor mortis is relieved. After that process, it is time to insert the tubes into the arteries. The reason that tubes need to be inserted is because we will be draining the body of the blood. Now, this is done by making a small incision into the arteries where the tube will be inserted. This type of tube is called a centrifugal tube. The first one to drain the blood is inserted into the leg. So I will make a cut here. And then this tube will be inserted. This is the step that we drain the blood, and here we have a tube going through his leg, and it is running out into this jar. Typically, the average adult human body carries about 10 pints of blood. So here we have his blood draining out into this tube. While this step is happening, I have to massage the body more because the body stiffens up, and sometimes to circulate it, you have to massage the body to make sure that all of the blood gets out. So here I'm massaging his feet and his hands. Whenever the body is massaged, typically you go outward toward the chest. After the blood is drained, an incision is made into the collarbone area to insert a tube into the artery there for the process of pumping in the embalming fluid. Embalming fluid is, a, is not only dyed pink, but it, it also contains a form of formaldehyde, so it's something to be very careful with. The purpose of embalming fluid is to keep the body preserved. And it is dyed pink because after death, every single time, there is skin decoloration. And dyeing it pink makes it look more like our natural skin color. And now I am making an incision into the area where the centrifugal tube with the embalming, embalming fluid will be placed. 
After the blood has been drained, we now need to pump embalming fluid in through the artery that's located in the collarbone area. So the purpose of this is to preserve the body, once again, because there are deadly bacteria and diseases inside the dead body. And now I must massage the body to make sure that all of the embalming fluid goes throughout the entire body because we don't we want to make sure that all of it is going through. Okay. After the arteries are embalmed, we then need to embalm the organs, which can be done in a few different ways, but I will be doing it today by inserting embalming fluid in through a syringe. So I will first put it in the heart, and then it will be put in to the stomach. Okay. After the embalming is done, we have taken out the tubes, we have put the blood in another room, and we patched up where the tubes were inserted. So now, at this point, we need to take a form of what? We need to take a form of corpse moisturizer, and we need to moisturize the face and the hands. This is done to make sure that the, that the deceased keeps his complexion and to make sure that the skin is smooth and stays nice and soft. After the body has been moisturized and embalmed properly, a sheet is put over top of it to keep it protected and so that there's not just a body sticking out. So, sheet is put over in a gentle manner and it has to be placed over in a certain way because the body at this point is actually very fragile. So if the body has a sheet on it, then it is possible that some places with cartilage or sensitive skin could possibly be even crushed or misshapen. So typically whenever they put the sheet over, they, at the nose area, they will bunch it up over the nose so that the nose doesn't get flattened. After this process of putting the sheet over him, then the body will be taken to the cosmetics area and it will be clothed with makeup on it for, like, for preparation of the funeral and or viewing. Thank you for watching my demonstration on how an embalming is done. Of course, the actual process would take a lot more work and it would take a lot more time, but for simplicity reasons, I had to make it more simplified. And this is a class demonstration, so in no means do I mean to disrespect any morticians, and in no means was anyone hurt in this video. The blood was fake, the embalming fluid is fake, I promise you no living creatures were hurt. Thank you for watching my video.